Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Uncle Jackie's Gumbo, Episode 8, the Mardi Gras Special. But first of all, here's a couple of Mardi Gras songs. Get your ticket in your hand. You ought to go to New Orleans. Get your ticket in your hand. You ought to go to New Orleans. And if you go to New Orleans, you will see the Mardi Gras. If you go to Mardi Gras, you will see a carnival ball. If you go to Mardi Gras, you will see a carnival ball. And if you see a carnival ball, you will see the Zulu King. You will see the Zulu King down on St. Claude and Dumas. You will see the Zulu King down on St. Claude and Dumas. And if you stay right there, you will see the Zulu Queen. You will see the Zulu Queen down on St. Claude and Dumas. You will see the Zulu Queen down on St. Claude and Dumas. And if you see the Zulu Queen, someone will show you Carnival Ball. Mardi Gras 2021. Well, Mardi Gras did not start with parades. Parades was a relatively new thing that got added to Mardi Gras. Actually, the first parade was sometime in the 1850s, started by a group of um, businessmen in Mobile, Alabama. It was years later that the first parade ever uh, established uh, was called Coleman. Comus was the first parade. Now, before that, and the Warriors had been around since the 1700s, people just poured out into the streets, into the streets with a bottle of wine and some kind of festive, crazy costuming, and and partied in the streets. That's how they, that's how Mardi Gras used to go on in Europe. It wasn't until around 1859 that we had our very first Mardi Gras in the Warriors with. Mardi Gras Parade, that is, which was Coma. Now, that was followed by Rex. And Rex was established because a Russian Grand Duke, Grand Duke Alexa, had come to visit New Orleans. And um, it was said that he had a secret affair with this opera singer, Jenny Lynn. And, um, and so, um, so to, to be able to have like a royalty to match his royalty, we came up with a fake royalty called Rex. And so the Rex Parade uh, was established in order to have uh, a big hoopla to meet um, Grand Duke Alexa because we felt that at least that, even if it was fake royalty, it was a royalty worthy of greeting Grand Duke Alexa from Russia, who we think all had a secret affair with Jenny Lynn. Um, and so then they wrote the song, If Ever I Cease to Love. If ever I cease to love, if ever I cease to love, let the cows jump over the moon with cream cheese. If ever I cease to love, let the cows come home and cream and milk made of cheese. If ever I cease to love. And then, and then there's a verse in the song that describes the location of the house where they think that the secret affair between Grand Duke Alexis and the famous opera singer Jenny Lynn. They says, take a left da, 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 on this street and turn on that street. And then it was an inside joke because everybody knew that this was the secret house where uh, and it wasn't too much of a secret in the walls where Jenny Lynn and uh, Grand Duke Ferdinand of Russia was having a secret affair. And so it was a tongue-in-cheek, double-entendre type of joke uh, for the song, which became uh, the the, um, main song of Mardi Gras uh, 
if ever I cease to love. But coming from the Creole sector, we get a song that's called Your Mardi Gras Mambo. And it goes something like this. Down in New Orleans where the blues was born, it takes a cool cat to blow the horn. On the Southern Rampart Street, a combo's there with your mambo beat. Your Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo. Down in New Orleans. In the two, in, down in New Orleans where the blues was born. It takes a cool cat to blow the horn. On the Southern Rampart Street. Combo's there with the mambo beat. Your Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo. Down in New Orleans. And speaking about parades, this is the year that all the parades are canceled. And the city's trying to squash as much as they can gathering of people. At 7 o'clock tonight, one block away from my house, uh, 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 one of my neighbors has this huge balcony. And on their balcony, they hired out um, basic members of this band called Papa Grows Funk. And so they played for about an hour, and then uh, the cops showed up and canceled them. They said, you can't do that. Uh, all the way up until Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, then you could play. Of course, now nobody's going to play on Ash Wednesday, but they'll follow through the following weekend. It's just that this particular weekend, they're trying to discourage uh, huge gatherings of people so it doesn't become a super spread of COVID-19. Now, we did have Mardi Gras last year, all the way up until the second weekend. At that time... um, Tourist cruiser ships were coming in to the port with thousands of people, and people were pouring in by airplane, by cruise ship, uh, the the whole region, you know, and people from all parts of the world. So that's when that's when COVID nineteen hit New Orleans was last year, the second weekend of Mardi Gras in March. A couple we had a couple of hazards too. There were a couple of parades where uh, they had huge, gigantic floats that uh, were linked together, and people would try to, in one parade, a lady tried to cross uh, over the connection between the two floats, and she got pulled under and killed. So the, the rule is, is that from that point on, the, the parade gets canceled when someone gets, um, if someone gets accidentally killed. And the same thing happened with Endymion. Uh, but the man wasn't trying to cross. He got pushed under the float because the crowds were pressing in to try to catch bees. Uh, And Damien is like a super crew. It's a huge, huge parade. They always have very famous uh, grand marshals, usually a movie star or two, or famous musicians. musicians. And uh, and they had double-decker floats that rolled down the street and... uh, very festively lit, very festively decorated, and they threw a lot of beads and trinkets. And so it was someplace on Canal Street that this man, uh, he stepped forward to try to get some beads, and they got pushed in by the crowd, and, and, and he fell and slipped underneath the float and got killed. So from that point on, the, the float was canceled. I guess at that point, we knew that the rest of 2020 was going to be a doozy. It was an omen. And it sure was, because it was like the following, the following week, everything, everything, I mean everything got shut down. That was the beginning of the, of the COVID uh, pandemic. We didn't know how, how long it was going to last, how severe it was going to be. We just thought it was going to be a small period of time. And at that time, uh, uh, mass distribution wasn't, wasn't happening at that time. Uh, it was just, you know, be careful, be safe. And a lot of us uh, caught uh, the flu with temperatures at that time. And uh, a lot of us think that, that at that time we got the first round of it and, 
and a lot of us are immune because of that, but it is not fun. Uh, we've been on the, the uh, pandemic ever since then, one year, one year ago, March. And it's been very, very difficult, particularly the so- social separation. Um, I, for one, have a difficult time with it because um, previous to the pandemic, I had five jobs. I had a full-time job and a whole bunch of little part-time jobs. I shrimp for the uh, Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, doing extra work on movie sets and sometimes featured parts and talking parts. And when I was on the movie set, I always meet a whole bunch of people and have a lot of fun and see the stars and have a, have, have good meals. And then uh, when Ush, with ushering, and we used to, uh, before ushering, we used to have meetings and sit right next to each other and joke and kid and laugh and and everything. Um, yeah. The Al- Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra till, still performs, but they perform without an audience. And you could buy a season ticket, but on virtual online, uh, because it's going to be quite a while before they uh, allow audiences to come back into uh, to the performance hall where they perform, which is the Orpheum. And it'll be a while until they need ushers again. <clears throat> Now, some venues are performing outside uh, when there's not Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, they just, like, shutting everything down. No no, no performances anywhere because they don't want big crowds to gather to start spreading the COVID because they're, they're trying to avoid a spike, even though the vaccine is out now. Uh, the vaccine, it's... It, it's Initially, we thought from information that we received from our government that there were going to be many places where you're going to have National Guard and we're going to distribute like huge amounts of it on, you know, and you'd be able to go and get your vaccination. But it's not going like that. It's going to the hospitals. It's going to uh, Tulane Hospital, Ashna Hospital. Uh, it's going to Walgreens. And that's where you you got to sign up at the the sign-up list is so long. So initially, you had your first responders or your medical care people, and they got their, most of them already got their first and second shots. You got to get two shots of the vaccination. And then uh, they extended that to uh, people in nursing homes, people live in nursing homes, and people from 70 on up. And then the state changed that to uh people 65 on up, and that includes me because I became 65 in December. So it was a, uh, it was last week that I registered with Walgreens to get my COVID shot, and I had I got up at 3.30 in the morning because every time I would go to, the, uh, to, their, to their website, they would say, none available at this time, none available at this time. So finally, I went 3.30 in the morning and registered, and then I, I was able to register my first and second shot. And uh, up until, and so I was supposed to get that last Friday at 2.15. And up until the day before, I got a confirmation. I was so looking forward to it because uh, I said, at least I get my first shot. And they said that after you get your first shot, you're at least 80% protected. And so, boy, that was hopeful. I was going, boy, man, that, 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 that's good news. And if you get your second shot after about, after about 8 to 11 days, now you still have to, like, be courteous and wear your mask, socially separate and wash your hands. But to the most part, you're immune. So that means that you can uh, extend yourself a little bit without fear. You can go places and not have to worry about, about you know, catching the COVID. As if there isn't enough another enough things to worry about. Uh, so, but at the last second on Friday, they sent an email saying your appointments are canceled, and they didn't give me a make good. And it just threw the, I mean, it threw the, it was pulling the rug from underneath me. I screamed, I yelled, I cried, and this was all at home. Then I called, I called them to see if there was an error. And they said, oh, no, um, 
you know, we canceled it because we, we need to supply the people who need to uh, get their second shot. And then some kind of problem with UPS. That was the second time they can't, the uh, Walgreens canceled it. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, Walgreens to me had been a very special place to go. I'd all known, you know, a lot of the people that worked there that were familiar with me, and it was like I, I was looking toward Walgreens as a neighborhood friend almost, the whole place. But not anymore because, well, you know, most of the staff are still good people and whatnot, but uh, the, the, the corporate mind is cold and indifferent. Uh, being that they had given me a confirmation for my first shot, they should have at least had the decency to, uh, you know, offer me a reschedule. You know, instead I had to go all the way back into the process and then and I got the same thing again. It said, it said no no uh, vaccinations available. Thank God for my neighbor who told me about his wife and their friend who dialed 311. At 311 you get the city. And there's an operator that you get if you dial 311 in New Orleans. And you can make an appointment to get COVID, the COVID-19 vaccine, that is. And so the city uh, of New Orleans is distributing to Tulane University. But you got to call 311 and get on the, and, and get on the list. Uh, so I got my appointment. I'm very happy that for, for vaccination one. Hopefully, they won't run out. And that's the yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, uh, this the, the demand is so much higher than the supplies, and the supplies is coming in very very slow. I mean, it's trickled down in terms of getting that vaccination. I mean, uh, I wish they would have kept with their promise and had like these huge stations. Uh, at these, like, um, big parking lots, you know. And, yes, the lines would be long and whatnot, but, you know, that that's basically what they were doing in Florida because Florida had become such a hot spot. In fact, you could, get, you could go to Florida, go get a line, it would be a long, long line, but you'll get vaccinated. You will get, va- you will get your vaccine. And uh, when they give you the first vaccine, then they give, right at that point, then they give you the... Uh, the date for your second vaccine, you know. And so I have to get out the house at least once a day, and, and a lot of us have to go to go shopping, go to a restaurant, go get some food, or go to the uh, grocery store, go get some food, uh, go to the pharmacy, pick up medicines, whatever. And every time you do that, even though you wear your mask and you wash your hands and you socially separate, you take the risk of catching the COVID. And it's nerve-wracking. You know, you, you kind of put that, you do what you can to protect yourself, but then you, you put that fear of, of catching it um, uh, behind you. Because if not, then you go crazy. Uh, a couple of times I felt that I lost my, I lost my mind, uh, particularly with the social separation. If I stay in my house too long and I'm by myself, I'm fortunate in that in my neighborhood I have a lot, a lot of creative people, and so uh, I didn't go to the concert earlier. We have other concerts, private concerts in people's backyard where we socially separate. We wear a mask and we hear music, and it's fun. You get to see your neighbors and whatnot. I got a kind of neighborhood that and we used to like visit each other, go into each other's houses and mix and and hug and talk and shake hands and whatnot. Can't do that. You just can't do it. Now, some people do it, but I don't um, because of the spread of COVID. You just never know. You don't want your neighbor to catch it, and you don't want you yourself to catch it. So, uh, so in about two or three weeks, I'll catch, I'll get my first uh, COVID vaccine shot, and then I guess about a month after that, I'll get my second one, hopefully. Um, back to the creativity. Being that this today is uh, Saturday, and it's usually Endymion Saturday in my neighborhood. I live in a part of New Orleans called Mid City, and Mid City is the last of the big neighborhood parades. At one time in New Orleans, every single neighborhood had its own uh, Mardi Gras parade. Uh, my original neighborhood is down in the Ninth Ward on Poland Avenue. 
uh, where we would have the Okeanos Parade. And it was a daytime parade. And uh, right on Poland Avenue, uh, you'd see, you know, you see the horses lined up, the marching groups, everything else like that, because that, that was the street that the, that the Okeanos Parade started. Uh, so every neighborhood uh, just about had its own parade. Uh, before I moved here, I live in Mid City. We used to have the Mid City Parade that would line up on um, St. Patrick Street, and that's the that's the street that's on the corner from my house. Slowly but surely, though, the city the city uh, rallied the uh, the parades and made them all start uh, uptown on St. Charles and Ferret around there, um, and that was like to. Um, that was to minimize the amount of police needed to uh, it takes to to cover a Mardi Gras parade uh, because it it uh, it takes a lot of policemen to, to cover Mardi Gras parades because the crowds are so huge and people coming from all over the world to see <clears throat> the Mardi Gras down in New Orleans and uh, they got you know. The New Orleans Police Department, at least back then, had crowd control down to a science. They'd have like uh, policemen on mounted horses, and they knew how to they knew how to cover a huge crowd with these uh, with these police on on horseback. Now you still had incidences, of course, but they they had it down to a science. So much so that policemen from other communities would come in. And um, and study how they what uh, the, the techniques that the New Orleans Police Department had developed over the years to uh, to do crowd control. Now, in lieu of all the parades being canceled, what what uh, a lady in, across the the river came up with an idea like, why wow, why don't we decorate our floats, our houses as floats? That is, why don't we decorate our houses as floats? Um, because there's a huge amount of, of uh, people who make the floats. You see, a, a float is um, the platform on wheels that they build up, and uh, it's very, very colorful. It's very, very colorful. Each parade has a theme. And there might be like 14 floats. There might be 28 floats, maybe more. And each float is decorated on a theme, and each float is, is manned with... Uh, you know, uh, either like 20 men, 10 on each side, 20 women, 10 on each side. On some, per- in some cases, it's mixed, and they come up with a theme and decorate the float accordingly. Uh, so you have people, professional artists, who build these floats. Um, incredible, incredible, huge, gigantic paper mache figurines. Uh, and then the, the night parades are all lit up with all kind of blinking lights and whatnot. And since LEDs came in, they, they get fancy with it, you know, they get automated and whatnot. So, but these float builders have been, uh, out, have been out of work because they canceled all the parades. So, this lady came up with this, one lady came up with this idea of decorating uh, the houses as Mardi Gras folks. They come up with a theme and decorate their house accordingly. And it caught on, and a lot of uh, well, a lot of people decorate their houses, you know, themselves. Not everybody's doing it, but several thousand people have, have done it, a huge amount, and 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 it's spread throughout the parts of the United States, and in and some in some cases around the world, because the word has gotten out. Um, and so they decorate their house like as if it's a Mardi Gras float. They might they'll pick pick a th- particular theme. Now the basic colors of Mardi Gras is purple, green, and gold. And um, but they go like way way beyond that. I got uh, there's there's two ladies across the street from my house and down the block, who in the centerpiece had this huge gigantic crow. And from one end of the front of the house to the other, there's just there's huge gigantic flowers. There's uh, there's stars, there's streamers, there's blinking lights, and up on the, uh, the top part of the house, which they call the Dorma, and the centerpiece is this huge crescent moon. Well, this is called the Crescent City because where we were at 
in, 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 uh, on the map, uh, the river bends and, and the city looks like a crescent or a croissant. You know, a croissant looks like a crescent moon. So that's why they call us the Crescent City. So, you got, so the, my uh, neighbors have this, uh, in the centerpiece top, they have this huge uh, lit up crescent moon with two stars. My neighbor across the street, she's a uh, is mother with a young girl. And uh, she's got, she built a spacecraft with a moon that blinks all kind of different colors and there's spaceman and stuff. Uh, another neighbor down the street uh, has their uh, house decorated with all kind of blinking lights and then and they got a skeleton that's dressed in Mardi Gras clothes and, uh, and, and the theme is Bailey Bones Mardi Gras because it's Bailey Bones Mardi Gras. But um, this uh, decorating of the houses is caught on. Now, uh, uptown New Orleans where the people have like some money, they got, um, you know, huge gigantic dinosaurs in their front yard and, and all kind of comedic themes of, uh, of Mardi Gras, you know, particularly tongue-in-cheek uh, double entendre jokes and whatnot about what we're going through and whatnot. And, and uh, so on television the other day, uh, the TV people decided to do a special called uh, Mardi Gras House Floats. And they covered and showed, you know, I guess about 20 different houses. Uh, one of them um, looked like a painting for, by John Sherrod. And it's a very famous painting that, that inspired a, a Broadway play called Sunday in the Park with George. And I don't know the, the the correct name of this painting, but if you look closer to uh, my friend Max Bernardi, Max Bernardi is the artist, and she's also a um, Mardi Gras float builder, uh, painter, that is. Uh, Max Bernardi built, uh, well, she painted uh, a huge size mural, and it looks like, at first glance, the painting by George Sherratt, which I think is still in Chicago, called Sunday in the Park, and popular known as Sunday in the Park with George, but it's, it's got another name to it, of course. And you look closely, and it's all Mardi Gras characters. Um, you got the 610 Stompers in there, which is a, a marching group that marches with the parade. You have, like, the Pussy Footers, and all of the characters... That, would, that you would see in um, in, the, in the original painting by George Sherratt, or actually, which is an impressionistic painting, by the way, are actually uh, Mardi Gras characters, and it's amazing. And they said that this is one of their favorites. So that was by Max Bernardi. Now most of the most of the house floats, though, they look like um, a Mardi Gras float would, and some of them have like all kind of blinking lights and whatnot. And blinking lights is appropriate for my neighborhood because and Demian, which usually starts about 4 p.m., is every single one of those floats, and there's about 40 floats that go down the street, big marching bands, all kind of music, all kind of songs, thousands of people. It's, it is, um, they, they start in my neighborhood, go down Canal Street, and then end up uh, by the Superdome where they have this big extravaganza. And... Uh, People come from all over the world. This would have been the weekend two of Mardi Gras, which is when we had the COVID uh, first hit. And um, the Mid-City Parade is, is, well, no, the Endymion Parade is such a huge economical injection into my neighborhood. It's, it's our Mardi Gras. And it's the only parade that night, thousands and thousands of people, no, millions, it's got to be millions, show up. From Mardi Gras, and then uh, when after the parade passes, these huge trucks come and clean the debris. I mean, it's just like it takes them hours to clean the streets, you know, because people have been there for hours, you know, eating hot dogs, and fried chicken, and this and that, and whatnot, you know. Um, every night, uh, there's cleanup crews that have to come back immediately because it's just, they these crowds, are, you know. They're, they been standing in one place all up and down the, uh, the route of the parade for hours, eating food, drinking drinks and whatnot, and they'll, they'll set up camp with their families and friends. Last year I was with, a, uh, with a, uh, an extended family 
on the parade route. And we had drinks and food and hanging out and catching Mardi Gras beads right along the parade route. And we were there for hours, you know. That's how Mardi Gras works. It's such a family-orientated thing. And it's so sad that we're not having that. But in lieu of that, we're having the, the house floats, which is uh, a wonderful alternative. It's not the same thing. Uh, but for myself, as long as I hear a Mardi Gras song, I mean, it puts me in the, uh, puts in a, me in the right frame of work, um, um, right frame of mind, I guess you would have to say, and spirit. Um, we have a radio station called WWOZ, and WWOZ is a local community-oriented station that's heard around the world on the web. And so if you want to tune in to a good station and hear some Mardi Gras music, he would get an, a, a sample of what Mardi Gras songs are like, tune in to WWOZ. It's 90.7 on FM dial that you can pick it up on a World Wide Web and hear Mardi Gras songs. And they, they have like a uh, South American mambo ribbon to, a rhythm to it. It's the rhythm of the music. It's, it's, it's medicinal. It's just, it just... It, Mardi Gras is, is is more than just parades. It's more it's more than you know just a few things. It's it's a uh, it's a state of mind. It's a state of being, and uh, and it, boy, that music just gets down in your soul, and you just you can't keep still. You just gotta move, you know. Hey, down in New Orleans where the blues was born, it takes a cool cat. To blow the horn on the style and Rampart Street. The combo's there with the mambo beat. Your Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo. Down in New Orleans. In New Orleans where the blues was born. It takes a cool cat to blow the horn on the style and Rampart Street. The combo's there with your mambo beat. Your Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo, mambo, mambo. Mardi Gras mambo. Sound of New Orleans. Well, everyone, that was episode 8 of Uncle Jackie's Gumbo, the Mardi Gras special. Um, please keep safe. Please wear your mask. Socially separate. Wash your hands. Try to get registered for that COVID-19 vaccine. It's important to keep us all safe so that one day when the numbers are slow, low enough and the spike is down and we can return back to normal, we, we could have parades again in New Orleans. Yes, indeed. If you get your ticket in your hand, you ought to go to New Orleans. Get your ticket in your hand. You want to go to New Orleans. And if you go to New Orleans, you will see a carnival ball. You will see the Zulu King down on St. Claude and Dumas. You will see the Zulu King down on St. Claude and Dumas. And if you stay right there, You will see the Zulu Queen. Okay, God bless everybody. Be safe. God bless you. Take care. Hang in there. Things are going to get better. Say your prayers. Do what you're supposed to do. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Get that COVID vaccine shot. Take care. God bless. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling unto them. Doesn't really matter about the weather. Everything is fine so long as we're together. Happy trails to you till we meet again. Take care, y'all. God bless.